All right. Um, good to get a good to get a win. I understand it's a preseason win. I thought the crowd uh, showed up as they always do, and uh, great to see them out here in preseason. Certainly heard them uh, when Demar made one of his tackles there, which was awesome to to, to witness and uh, to experience overall. And um, you know, I thought there were some good things. Uh, I thought we showed moments of our standard that we hold ourselves to. Um, not enough, though. Right? We've got to be more consistent, starting with penalties, more discipline, pre-snap penalties, um, because it hurts you. hurts you field position-wise, hurts you when you have a team in second and long. Um, but I thought there were moments also where, where we did some good things. Uh, I liked how we ended the game on offense in a four-minute drive. Um, um, so I thought, again, flashes, moments, just not consistent enough, so we go back to the drawing board. But um, injuries for you guys. Um, Tommy uh, Doyle, as you probably all saw with the, uh, with the same knee. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any bird for you on that. Um, and uh, DJ, uh, DJ's um, going to get a CT scan here later um, this afternoon or this evening. So that's all I, that's all I have for you. How do things go in terms of <clears throat> the, the, the new slash old part of your job description and call it defense? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was fun. You know, it was fun to be back out there and kind of rolling up my sleeves a little bit and still working through the communication piece. Uh, preseason game a little bit different than a regular season game, but we'll go back just like we do with the players and, and evaluate that and talk about some areas that we've got to improve on. And and um, and so it's just kind of the getting on the same cadence and, and when I'm going to be in certain spots and when I need uh, information at times and make sure making sure that information is is readily available when I need it um, because it's I'm back and forth in between series there so um, but overall overall pretty good there weren't a lot of situations today that came up offensively really um, even though we were talking about some things <clears throat> so yeah it was uh, it was pretty good first first game Yeah, <clears throat> I don't. I don't really. I mean, you think I'm sure there's other preseason games today. I, I focus just on our game, uh, and there were some yesterday as well, and the day before, I believe. And what we just witnessed um, to me is remarkable. It really is. Um, it's a true sign of a young man's courage, and obviously, everyone that helped him get to this point. Um, I know there's a football game going out, going on out there today, but I mean, truly remarkable. Um, display of courage and strength and faith. Um, had a chance to communicate with, with DeMar a little bit last night. And, um, you know, he assured me he was ready to go and was going to trust um, in his preparation and, 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 uh, and God. And I think that shows a lot about who he is. You talked to us about feeling all the different feelings, you know, nervousness, also that it was fun. What about for you when he goes on the field? What feelings were you going through? <laughs> yeah, well, I had a chance that, during what we thought was going to be a weather delay in warm-ups there um, to be around our docks. And, uh, and so I was just kind of sitting near them, and I said, hey, you're going to watch them, right, you know, extra close today. And they assured me they would. And it's hard for me to, to do that. I certainly watch them when I can, but, um, but I know he's in good hands with, those, with our docks as well. Coach, Osiris Terrence uh, getting denied today. What led to that, and how would you raise the performance? Uh, you know, I'm going to give you one of the standard answers. I need to, when you're talking about interior line play in particular, it's, it's hard to see, you know, with the naked eye out there. And, um, but good to see a young player get an opportunity. And, and we were trying to do that with some other young players as well. And now we go back and, and look at the film. And it's the first time. And um, I think that's hard, right? It's, a, it's an opportunity, but there's a lot that goes into that. Nerves. Um, so that sometimes they can get the best of you. But... Really, it's where we where we go from here, where he goes from here, and, and what you do with it. Without looking at the film, Sean, how would you assess your quarterback play from Kyle and Matt? Yeah, I, I thought um, I thought it was it was um, kind of hot and cold at times. You know, I thought that we moved the ball at times, and then and we stalled out, or we weren't more than anything probably productive enough on early downs um, in the first half, and then in the second half, I felt us a little bit better moving the ball on a more consistent basis. Uh, Matt getting the ball out. Um, I thought he got into a good rhythm, and my head goes off to him. Where do you where do you stand on that right now? Do you view that as sort of an open competition right now behind Josh? Yes. Yeah. 
moment into this, was it the plan to take Bane out after just one series? Or was it the interception that kind of led to that? Or what did you use? Why only five snaps? Yeah, I just wanted to... Uh, he wanted to get a good feel for a good look at Christian and uh, and Kair there, um, two young players, and um, you know, Dane made a nice play and uh, took the ball away. And um, trying to trying to get, get a good long look at Christian and Kair, I think they got close to um, around 30 snaps each. Sean, the decision to have Demar Blitz was that situational or was that by design? Um, probably more situational. It wasn't anything. Um, that we were going to call his number per se, and I think the great part about what we've all witnessed with with Demar is he's gone from um, you know very much in the spotlight in the months following um, the event on the field in Cincinnati, and and what I what I love about him and respect about him is he's with all that going on, even still he he really tries to just um, embed in the team. Right, and not make it about him and go about his business and get himself, getting himself ready for a season. And um, I think really, again, that speaks to who he is as a person. Last night when you mentioned you had a talk with him, was that a typical type of discussion you would have with any player before a game? Or did you feel, what was that uh, particular because of what Yeah, I just had? wanted to check in. Um, you know, we, we do it from time to time, um, but in this case, um, listen, I care about the players as, as people first and, um, you know, wanted him to know certainly that we support him, but also at any moment in time, if he felt a certain way and needed to talk about it, um, and I'm, I hope he knows this anyway, and I hope all the players know this, but that he could come to me and we could talk about it. And um, like I've said to you guys before, there was not going to be any pressure from me to play and we were going to go at his cadence, and amazing. I mean, just truly amazing. Nothing I did, all, all Demar. Do you have an update or an extent of Terrell Bernard's injury? So he didn't suit up. To yeah, that. he so he hurt his hamstring in that last practice uh, at training camp, and um, don't quite know exactly how long it's going to be. Um, but usually hamstrings take a little bit of time, and so um, that's what we're expecting. How does that affect the middle linebacker? battle and, and maybe even Balin's place in that yeah. understanding he was kind of the odd man out at that time. Uh, well, it's hard to, unfortunately, hard to make, not only make the team, but to control pieces of playing time when you're, when you're not out there. That said, I thought he was having a good preseason in terms of training camp up to this point, and I was excited to watch him play and, um, and split some reps with, with T-Dot. Um, um, but obviously we, we weren't able to do that. So now the piece he needs to control is getting back healthy again and getting back on the field as soon as possible. And I thought overall as a middle linebacking core, um, I thought they did, did, some, did some good things. And you saw AJ in there as well, and then, and then, uh, and then uh, Balin as well. So um, you know, I thought it was, they did some good things out there, those, that group. Sure. I, think, I, think you, uh, you know, uh, I think you mentioned it earlier, but to clarify on top of you, the knee injury was at the same knee that he uh, hurt last year. Same knee. Okay, right. and I know it, it may be premature, but are you at all concerned that it, yeah, it could be related? Yeah, I don't, no, I don't know. I just I just know it's the same knee. I don't know what to what extent uh, it is at this point. To jump back to tomorrow, we talked about when he was in on defense a bit, but starting on special teams, are the conversations around that any different? Just, you know, with his high velocity and everything before his first special team snap, like what were those conversations like, if any? Um, probably wasn't many to be honest with you, other than with Coach Smiley and, and Coach Harkey. Um, yeah, he's again. It's he. That's again what I mentioned earlier. Is he's just done a phenomenal job of. Hey, I'm one of the one of the guys on the team, and again, I think that speaks to to his character. Almost all your starters were out there today. Kind of what went into that decision of wanting those guys to play today, and what is your outlook kind of on the rest of the preseason with specifically the guys who you know are penciled in starters? Yeah, um, you know, we felt like you know every year is different, and we felt like uh, from the research we've done and um, the work we've put in in the off season in particular that this was the best approach. Um, as you saw, I held a, held a couple guys out that were healthy scratches um, in this case, but um, just. You know, ramping them up incrementally, we felt like it was the right approach. Coach, we know uh, James Cook went out and executed a great 
know, we touched on, but you better talk about the boost that Latavius Murray was able to provide in that first half. Yeah, I felt I could feel him, and just in terms of um, you know his his presence out there, he's a big back. Um, he runs strong, and um, he's he's been a good. Um, he's had a good leadership presence and influence on our football team as well. So, um, you know, I think it's great when you can get a, a local uh, guy that takes a lot of pride in Western New York and, and what the Bills mean to Western New York and um, can come in and contribute the way he has so far. Speaking of the running backs, what's the update on Damian Harris? He's missed a few days now. Yeah, I don't, don't have an update at this point. I'll know more tomorrow when I get around Nate and um, figure out uh, where that's how he's trending. I, I believe he's trending in the right direction, um, but I can't put a day on it or a number of days at this point. What about uh, Trayvon Howard? We've been waiting to see him flash uh, that last play on that, on that extra point. Just good to talk about that. Yeah, that was a big play. Um, you talk about you know f- guys that you, you can feel their presence out there, and he's, he's done that since spring and, and uh, also in camp to this point. Um, he plays, he's passionate about, the way he plays, you can tell he's passionate about uh, football and he plays hard, and that was a big play in the game and and, and the outcome of the game. Yeah, how many? I didn't. We didn't chart that. How many? How many catches did he have? He had one catch. Is it? Somebody have stats for me? Yeah, you know, three for twenty. Three for twenty. That's good. Did he? And a kickoff return for how many? Holding. It was a holding call, right? Right. He, he made he 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 showed up in the in the uh, he visited the locker room a little bit before the game, um, not really standard operating procedure <laughs> <laughs> in the NFL. Maybe that happens in, in other sports like baseball and things, but not as much in football. But um, you know, I guess uh, typical uh, typical for him. And he, I, I love him. I, right, we all love him. He's uh, he's such a great human being, and I'm just so proud of of what he's done with his life and his career. Kickoff. Is there any chance he wasn't taking it out? Of the yeah, <laughs> I think Tyler he hesitated a little bit. I was saying, hey, I, I was saying, hey, get him, go get him, man, <laughs> right? Go get him. So, no, I don't know. It's one of those deals where if he would have taken it back to the house, you know, I'm mad at mad at us and mad at myself. And uh, but I, you know, it was deep. I think T Bass kicked it, you know, in the back half of the end zone, and, and it looked like he was going to down it. Then all of a sudden, he pulled, he takes it out. And our guys are like, here we go, you know. <laughs> uh, so that was fun to that was fun to watch.